My name is David Weinfeld. I am the Chief Strategy Officer of ScreenReach Interactive, and we have an app called Screech, and the app is available for download. Uh, if you download it now, it's on iPhone or any Android device, and you're actually going to be able to, and see people are voting now, uh, kind of participate in an interactive experience. And really, part of the reason why we're here is the fact that our platform is open that we're all about creating interactive experiences between any type of user and any form of content. What's so great about that is you as an audience, uh, an individual, maybe it's a patient of a uh, hospital, are able to provide that real-time feedback via a device that has become an extension of ourselves. The way I think about it is mobile as the Rosetta Stone of our lives, that it connects all these disparate pieces. So what we can see here, we have a couple questions. So the first question is, what percentage of medical equipment in the developing world is not working? And 70%, so we have uh, you know, different responses coming in. And as you see, we actually are connected to Facebook. So those are your Facebook photos that are falling under the answer. And <laughs> thankfully, I can say that, well, 89% of you are correct. And what's also really interesting is that all of you are seeing an answer pad. Now, I, up here, am seeing a control pad. So while other people are using a clicker, I am using now my phone to go to the next question. So here we are. The next question, if you're, again, downloading the app, you just download the app. You enter the code 300. You're automatically going to get synced to the experience. So now we're asking what percentage of medical equipment in developing world hospitals is designed or produced in the developing world. <laughs> and as you're seeing, for those people where you're seeing kind of our, uh, our nice Screech character, he's uh, you know, a blue gremlin, that those are people who aren't logged in on Facebook, but you can still vote, so that's fantastic. And you know, it's just an example of how we can get you all involved how we can get this great audience interacting and responding. And what it really is is that it doesn't need to be a game. It can be just as easy of a pad where people are telling what their pain threshold is or how they're feeling in response to certain medication, working with a lot of educational institutions, businesses for real-time collaboration. So yes, we have 80% now who are correct in their response of 5%. 20% of you, I'm sorry, 45% uh, is incorrect, but uh, there are more questions to come. Now, what was the primary complaint of medical directors with regards to their medical equipment? Not enough or too much? Now, this seems fairly self-explanatory, but it's nice to see that we kind of have the audience is a little conflicted, 44, 56%. Up, oh, the scales are tilting. <laughs> and I'll take that. 62% say too much. And you know what? 62%, those of you in the audience, uh, Whoever that is who has the nice uh, kind of white shadowed Facebook profile. Oh, right over here. Okay. Well, you're correct. Um, the individual who has a, a nice shot of kind of looking over the, uh, the ocean there with sunglasses on. Sorry, you're incorrect. Now, what percentage of mobile users are in the developing world? And I think this really gets to the point of the things that are then possible when you start accessing your mobile handset. So it's looking good here, 87%. Give people a few more seconds to chime in. All right, I'll take it there, 86% of you are correct. That's right. And what that really then opens up is
is what you can see there is, you know, what you can now do. <laughs> uh, people are still answering the wrong, wrong answer. That's okay. Globally, the number of cell phone subscribers exceeds 5 billion or 1.8 billion. Now we're getting to the point, all right, not everybody has a smartphone. We're right around kind of 50% of users have smartphones, especially in the U.S., but we are entering a point where actually mobile phones and smart devices are actually starting to uh, cross over with desktop PC sales. So we have 58%. Okay, we have a South Park character. <laughs> and you know what? South Park is correct. It's over 5 billion. So 61% of you, congratulations. 39% of you, I'm sorry, not good enough. Well, they are right. Okay. Okay. All right. I have to be honest. I read that question myself, and, and they are both correct. But don't you remember? I'm sure uh, you know, your professors tell you one answer can be both correct, but one's a little more correct. And now the question here, which middle income country can claim to have the most cell phones per capita, Montenegro or China? All right, I'm seeing a lot of Montenegro, a little bit of China, a lot of people in China. All right, Montenegro it is, 61% of you are correct. Still have answers coming in. Now, which one of these countries in the world has more personal computers than people? Australia or the UK? This is a tough one. Okay, give people a few more seconds to, uh, to come in. I kind of feel like I'm having my Alex Trebek moment. <laughs> so yes, 63% of you are correct. It is Australia. So now the first handheld mobile phone was used in 1973 or 1981. The first one. Okay, 72, 28. Any more answers coming in? And 72% of you are correct. 1973. A little surprising. Of course, they didn't look anything like the phones we have today. Huge, you know, Zach Morris style phones, even kind of worse than that. Now, where was the crowdsourced testimony tool you Shahidi invented? <laughs> Kenya or USA? <laughs> Up. Right, we have a couple brave people who are voting for USA, even though the overwhelming majority is choosing Kenya. Okay, looks like uh, the majority is correct. It is Kenya with 84%, 85%, so well done. 15% of you, what were you possibly thinking? <laughs> but also what that says is, as we talk more about this, we now understand that that's something we, we have to talk more about. So now you can say how we're getting you to interact. This is a fun way we're tying in kind of that gaming experience into knowledge into education. Yushahidi has staff in how many cities around the world? Five or 17? I gotta say, these Facebook pictures are fantastic. <laughs> 
Okay, a couple more people are bopping down. All right, looks like, looks like the, uh, the waterfall up. Oh, up, oh, we got one more. And 17 is correct. So 85% of you, well done. This is a smart audience. I'm not sure if there was a majority that got the question wrong. So well done. <laughs> now, how many people around the world go online on a regular basis? Four billion or one billion? Okay, still got answers coming in. Okay, we're good. All right, 85% of you, 4 billion is correct. So I'd have to say, <laughs> what, are people still answering wrong? Okay, this, is, this to me is a very interesting question as well. The number of new prosthetic arm products resulting from government research since Afghanistan started is? The war. The war. The war. I'm learning I need to be a little more specific with these questions. Okay, we have a couple more coming in. This is, this is pretty close. If this was who wants to be a millionaire, I'd have to use another one of my lifelines. <laughs> and I have to say, sorry, the majority, 55%, you are incorrect. It's actually zero. <laughs> so this is something where one of the speakers who's uh, going to be coming up later, this is really the topic of his conversation, she'll be able to, to see and understand why and what initiatives are happening really to, uh, to change this. Now, how many U.S. amputees have there been since the war in Afghanistan started? <laughs> Total from the war. Okay, looks like, oh, still a little shift. All right, the majority of people, 73% of you say 25,000. How many people think that's correct? 73% of the people in the audience. <laughs> and sorry, 73% of you are wrong. It's actually 250. That person who just voted, you don't get credit for getting it right. <laughs> Even more. And now of Tang, Teflon, and Velcro, how many of these successful products were the result of NASA research? Okay, answers are still coming in. All right. 78% of you, up, 77, shifting a little bit. The 77% of you who said all three, I'm sorry, but again, the, my, the majority, right after I said something, that you guys were, were so smart and doing so great. I jinxed you. But the 25% that said zero, you guys are right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Tang, while you may have heard this story, oh, it was invented, you know, while they were up in, uh, you know, the space shuttle. Urban myth. Didn't happen. Now we start getting back to some of the more serious questions. How many people who have AIDS and need treatment actually get treatment?
All right, this is overwhelming, except for the one anonymous person <laughs> who voted 75%, but yes, it's, it's 33%. Now, what is the single most important thing that can save a, woman, a woman's life during childbirth? And skilled health care, 98% of you, overwhelming majority. <laughs> Up. There, there are some dissenters. But yes, the 93% the of you now, uh, it is skilled health care. And now, how many people in the world have never visited a health worker? And as we're coming to the close of you know, this experience, what I just want you to think about is how you could take an interaction like this, turn it on its head, make it not about you know, having a game or a quiz. This can really be anything. This could be a joystick. It could be a survey. It can be, like I said before, a uh, grading pain threshold. It could be a live tour through uh, a college campus. It could be students responding in real time to their professor. It could be uh, patients in a hospital in real time telling you how you feel about your care. And this is uh, you know, a startling statistic, but a billion people is right. So 87% of you, 88, have answered uh, that question correctly. Still, people are trying to get like bonus points for uh, for answering. And this is actually the last question, um, but what I just want to leave you with is, again, we're an open source platform where our language is freely available on Screech.com. We want to have really educational institutions, businesses, hospitals, really kind of create these interactions that make the most sense for the audience. Because to me, and this is what we're, we're all here about, is that technology is empowering. We're all here as an audience. There's no reason that I need to stand up here and just orate or just talk and not understand what you're thinking or feeling. Now, you all can't stand up and, and shout what you're thinking, but you can use this device with you that uh, has really become a part of ourselves to, to tell me what you think and how you feel, and then we can respond to that. Then if you think about that on a massive scale, on a healthcare level, you can start to imagine the different types of things and different opportunities that lie ahead of us. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>